Hey everyone, welcome to the latest edition of Smart and Vinyl. We're going to talk a little music, a little records, and a whole lot of meh. So tonight's topic is a little meh, I have to admit. Um, in my last video, if you watched it, about Corla Pandit, um, I mentioned a couple don'ts when it came to record collecting. And one of them was don't buy dollar records. And I've had some questions about, well, why not? Why can't I get dollar records? So I'm going to explain a little, you know, the pros and cons, because there are some pros to dollar records um, and definitely some cons. And we're going to discuss it a little bit and I'll try to keep it short. So disclaimer, there are no more dollar records anymore. Um, ever since vinyl came back, uh, there has been no dollar records. The cheapest records I've seen have been like two dollars, three dollar records, and their condition's terrible. Like the stuff I see in the two dollar bin was like the shit can bin back in the day. Like those wouldn't even be for sale. But back in the day, before vinyl took off again, all record stores had a like a dollar record section, and it was great. Really, um, everything was in good condition. You know, there was. And let's go into the pros, right? So. The pros for dollar records. One, you can discover new stuff and cheap. Um, you know, you'll go through and it'll look interesting. And this is where knowing something about like labels and other bands come in handy because you might see something you don't know, but you know that label and you know what they put out. So you can take a good gamble on that. Like perfect example, a couple years ago, I was with an ex-boyfriend and uh, we were at some record store in Burbank and I was flipping through the, they did have a little bit of dollar records, but I was flipping through and I saw a record and it looked all 80s, synthy, new wave. And I looked at the label and it was a familiar label. So I'm like, here, try it. And he's like, I don't know. I'm like, no, let's try it. Trust me. Trust me. I've been doing this my whole life. Sure enough, take it home. Oh my God, that was like the best record ever. And I know. It was a dollar record. So if you know a little bit about records and start looking at labels of bands that you like and see what other stuff they put out, you can find some gems in the dollar records. And also going to gems, you can find hidden gems in the dollar records. You know, um, that's where I got a lot of that Exotica stuff. Like those Corla Pandit records, at least two of them, I think, came from the dollar bin. Um, you know, there's because people don't know. I mean, even then and now you get some young kids working and they're like, I don't know if this shit is dollar, dollar, dollar. And it could be some really good stuff that they have no idea what it is. Um, so dollar records are good for finding hidden gems. Um, it's also good for getting old favorites. Like, uh, you know, if you need a, a really great copy of Rebel Yell, you know, back then you can find it in the dollar record. It would be clean, pristine, great, you know. Um, and it was a cheap way because, you know, I don't know what it's like now because I haven't bought anything on iTunes in a million years. But then, you know, if you say you're going to buy whatever, Rebel Yell, the song on iTunes, it was a dollar, right? Well, then you can get the whole album for a dollar and you get Flesh for Fantasy and, and everything else. So it was a better deal if you're going to listen to it. And um, that brings me to my cons. Wah, wah. So, one, a lot of times dollar records are in bad shape. Um there's a re you know so there a lot of times there's a reason they're in the dollar section they don't have a dust sleeve um just fucked up sometimes the cover's fucked up and the album's good or vice versa the album's all i mean the cover's all rat chewed and watery but the album's still good so you gotta look at everything um you know a lot of times you'll buy dollar records at first when you're trying to build your collection you're like oh it's a dollar who cares it's a dollar and then you're like you'll never listen to it and this goes for and i'm guilty of this too it'd be like oh this cover is badass and i'm buying it for the cover i mean it's great if you are going to buy the record go to michael's get the frame get the nails get the hammer put that motherfucker up right then because if not it will not go up on your wall don't don't fool yourself into thinking that um what else oh you know, hauling it around. I used to have a lot of dollar records. And like I said, it was stuff I never listened to, everything like that. When you move, records are, other than books, records are the heaviest fucking thing you're going to lift. And you get sick of hauling these records that you never listen to anymore, that are not in good shape, that aren't worth a whole lot. So don't buy the dollar records for that. Um, also, and I, it took me a while to get this, but now I get this, maybe because I'm an adult now. Um, save your money for a good record. Like, instead of buying $10, 10 $1 records, take that $10, put it towards a really good record that you want, that's a good quality, that you're going to listen to, and it's worth more in the long run. Um, so that's another, you know, con. I mean, save your money, 
don't blow it on just fucking dollar records. You're going to have to haul everywhere and you're not going to listen to. And then, like I said, the raps are going to chew them and stuff like that. But there was a couple bonus things I would say about dollar records. One, like I said, a lot of times people don't know what they have. They have multiples. They just throw it in the dollar bin. But always look because as I showed with, you know, uh, like the Lenny and Squiggy record, a lot of stuff has posters. So the, the jacket may be jacked up or the record or whatever, but just look because it could have a poster or something really cool in it. I can tell you, um, it seemed like every Donna Summer record she put out in the 70s had some kind of cool poster. So the album might be fucked, the cover's fucked, but if the poster's great, put it up on your wall then because who cares? It, you're not dilute, you know what I mean? The album's fucked. It's not like you're saving it for the album. But... And then on the flip side, what you can do is, and what I've done here, and I, I have one to show you, uh, if you know a record comes with certain things, you can piece together records. Like, um, I have a good, say there's two albums, and one's the jacket's shitty, but the record's good, and the other one's the record shitty, but the jacket's good. As long as it's really the same album, you can switch them, and you can find, you know, like I have this one. It's a KHJ Boss Radio right? It's pretty cool. It was in the dollar bin. There's no dust sleeve. The record's fucked up, but I bought it because it has a game and it still has like the game pieces and stuff. So, you know, someday I'm going to find a really good one of these that doesn't have the game pieces. So I'll take it from this fucked up record and put it. And by the way, it is really cool. It has like Charlie Tuna and Shadow Stevens and stuff. So maybe I'll do a video about that another time. But that's a good example. Or if you just think, oh, those little pieces are cute. I'm going to hang them up on my wall. It's fine. You paid a dollar for it. Uh, be careful, though. Be wary. Because I had someone years ago had two copies of The Queen is Dead. And it was that situation where, like, one cover was shitty, but the album was good and vice versa. So he switched it, not realizing that it was two separate editions and one had a bonus song. So it totally fucked it up. Um, so if you're going to start piecing records together, make sure it's correct all around the same edition same you guys really record nerds can pick out the they'll pick up the album and look on the the label and be like nope this is the wrong one this one's produced in germany it's like so trust me just before you do that just do your research but posters and stuff like that's harmless get dig them out of the dollar records so anyways i hope that kind of explained the good and bad about getting dollar records um you know i'm never i never want to discourage anyone from discovering new stuff, um, just be mindful. And, and sadly, like I said, I rarely see dollar records anymore. Um, it's $2 records, $3 records, and they're really bad. Like the condition's really bad. And, um, so just keep your eye out, keep your eye out and make sure to always look at your records and stuff before you buy them. And don't settle. I know sometimes you'll be like, well, it's not the greatest shape, but I'm going to get it. Well, okay. I guess. I mean, if you plan on buying a better one, but a better one will always come along. And I've learned that recently. So anyways, have a good day. I'm going to make some more videos. Please share. Please like my Facebook. Please like my YouTube. Please share. Subscribe. Everything. And that's it. So have a good day. No doll.